Hey everyone, Kieran here from Glitchery Gaming. We're going to be taking a look at another game you might have missed on the Switch. This time we're looking at Mighty Gunvolt Burst, which is by creators Integrate, which is why you might see some different Integrate games that are below this just now. Uh, before we get too into the game itself, I'm going to go into a little bit of history of how this game came to exist. Like the kind of. I feel like the series of events that created this game are important to understanding why it's so strange that this game is so good. Um, for example, when Mega Man 10 came out in 2010, Capcom had a couple other Mega Man games in development, which they were cancelled when the leader, or the leader, the creator of Mega Man uh, Inafune left and formed his own studio, Concept. Those games didn't look very, well, arguably Mega Man Legends 3 looked good. Mega Man Universe looked kind of terrible anyway, so it's not really relevant. But he went on, made a Kickstarter for his new project, Mighty Number no. 9, which is a Mega Man style platformer that was basically a direct clone of the thing that he had just, you know, stopped making for Capcom. And it was bad. It was delayed a bunch. There's still Kickstarter rewards that haven't been delivered yet. It was a disaster from start to finish, and the game itself was just bad. So, why am I bringing it up here? Because alongside it, or actually slightly before it, uh, Comtip partnered with Entity Creates to create an 8-bit spin-off of the game called Mighty Gunvolt. And this game was 8-bit, played like the old Me uh, Mega Man games, and also brought in a character from Entity Creates' other series, uh, the Azure Striker Gunvolt series, so brought in Gunvolt from that, which those games themselves are basically Mega Man Zero knockoffs because Integrates used to make the Mega Man Zero games and then those ended and Capcom doesn't make them anymore. And so Integrates were like, hey, we'll go make our own one. And they made what is basically a new one of those in that series. So this 8 bit game was kind of like a, hey, here's the two Mega Man spiritual successors meeting together. And it was before they knew one of them was going to be bad and a mess and whatever. So that was a shame. Uh, but then this is a sequel to that game, Mighty Gunvolt Burst. It's a 8-bit Mega Man style game again. You jump and shoot your way through a bunch of levels and you fight bosses and you defeat them to get a new weapon which the boss drops and other bosses are weak to specific weapons that you got from bosses before. It's that same Mega Man formula and that's great. Especially because it seemed for a while that Capcom wasn't going to make a new Mega Man game. They did, as it turns out. Last year we got the fantastic Mega Man 11, which I also highly recommend and will probably do a video on at some point. But, as it stands, in terms of that kind of old 8-bit style, this does a good job of kind of managing to connect together more modern sensibilities with that old style of gameplay. So it's not just an old Mega Man game, there's a bunch of new features and upgrades and stuff like that that make it feel like a new thing that is really good. At its heart, Mighty Gunvolt Burst is one of those old Mega Man games. It's got really solid platforming, really solid shooting, and also some of the levels and some of the bosses from Azure Striker Gunvolt 2 appear in this as well, which is pretty cool. But it's different enough just because the core mechanics of those games are so different from each other, where Azure Striker Gunvolt is a Mega Man Zero style game that relies a lot on uh, boosts and dashes and wall jumps and things like that, which this game doesn't have because it's very similar to the old style kind of Mega Man games where it has some of that, like you can get some upgrades for your weapons that'll give you double jumps for example, but it's still a lot simpler than that kind of game. And the other thing that basically makes it stand out though is this customization system it has built into it for the weapons. So instead of bosses just giving you, uh, for example, you kill the fire boss and it gives you a fire gun. It doesn't give you that. It gives you a fire style for your current gun, which you go into the customization system, you make a gun, and the simplest option you could do is you just make the base blaster, but it has a fire element on it now, so it's useful against uh, enemies that are weak against fire. But if you want to go the extra few steps, then maybe you spend some time, you know, finding hidden stuff in the levels, which this game is filled with tons and tons of, like, hidden collectibles to encourage you to replay levels. Um, maybe you find some of the hidden collectibles that allow you to upgrade your weapons further. 
basically there's these points that you get that will limit the amount that you can equip to a weapon when you're customizing it. And by default you can basically just make a custom blaster and maybe you can change a couple of little things here like it shoots a little bit faster or shoots an additional bullet or something. But when you find these collectibles you end up making massively overpowered weapons that are like okay well instead of just making a Mega Man gun that shoots fire instead of a regular bullet, I make a Mega Man gun that I can charge that shoots fire, that has homing shots, that shoots out in three different directions every time it shoots and it auto charges. Or this one gives me a double jump and also it gives me uh, additional armor so that I take less damage from hits and so on and so forth. It's pretty fantastic and then you can switch out on them uh, on the fly just based on which ones are equipped during the gameplay. So you can just run through a level and be like oh I really need double jump here so I'll switch to double jump one or I think I can take these guys much easier so I'm gonna switch to the one that gives me less armor but better weapons because it'll make me get through it faster. It's just a really cool system that gives you a lot of variety and a lot of kind of uh, you know leeway into how you playing it the way you want to play it. I am never usually super into these kind of systems in games, they usually just bore me to be honest and I just, if a game forces me to engage with this kind of system that's usually the point where I stop playing that game. Even when it comes to like collectible card games, when it comes to the point where it's like, hey, customize your deck so you can actually progress further, that's the bit where I get kind of bored with collectible card games. Something about this though just clicked with me and I have played a ton of this game and I've spent my time collecting all of the uh, unlockables, all of the hidden things, just so that I can make more unique weapons. Because you're not, also not just finding points to make you able to make better weapons, you're finding extra components to unlock things like, oh, this you know shoots in arcs instead of straight lines and so on and so forth. So you can make even crazier weapons. It's just fantastic. And even without that, even if you just make like the core blasters, you just go, hey, I just need a fire weapon to take out the ice weapon. That that's great. Like it is at its core still just a really great platformer. It's one of the best of these kind of Mega Man style platforms. Another thing that's worth taking into mind about this game is the DLC. Which might seem like a weird thing, I know you're thinking, you're thinking, ah, oh, Kieran, this is a like small indie game and it has a bunch of DLC for it. I can't believe you're like encouraging this kind of thing. The core game has more than enough stuff in it to just buy this game and just have fun and that's it. Like, like you can ignore this. In fact, this DLC is very much just aimed at people who want to replay the game over and over, so that are already super into it, which I think is the best way to do that kind of DLC, like not putting in things that are like, hey, you need this to progress or you need this to get the full story or this is basically an essential part of the game. These are very much bonus things that if you are already played through the game with the two characters that are included in the base game, or I think maybe three characters included in the base game, uh, I forget because I bought all the DLC, um, then you can just replay through them with more characters and all of these characters play slightly differently. So you have um, the, the one that I probably reference the most just because I like it the most is there's a character called Rey, who is a character from Mighty Number no. 9, and she's definitely not Zero from Mega Man X, even though she definitely looks a lot like Zero from Mega Man X. Uh, she uses a bunch of melee attacks instead of having a blaster, and the other main kind of thing about it is that her levels are all redesigned because she is constantly losing health by default. So killing enemies recharges par for health bar, and that means that she has to have different levels from the rest of the characters because there has to be more enemies on them otherwise if there's just a platforming section that's in one of the older levels you would just die part way through it because you would run out of health because of the time it took and that's just a cool idea so they added more enemies to it the enemies drop more health pickups now as well and uh she does more damage than the regular uh characters do so you're just running through these levels, tearing apart enemies to keep yourself alive. And it's just a really cool way to play the game. And it's really nice to have this kind of alternate way to play the game. And again, she has the full customization system, so you can go in and make her weapons do different things. It's just a really cool idea and a really nice way to handle DLC. There's arguably maybe a bit too much of it, and there's not really that much difference between most of the characters. They're not all as different as uh, Rey is. But look at the descriptions for them if you're interested in them. 
pick them up one by one. They're all really cheap. You, you definitely don't need all of them. I bought all of them because I'm stupid, but that's that's just me. So, yeah, if you like Mega Man style platformers or just 2D platformers in general, I highly recommend this. I think it's probably the best of the kind of recent Mega Man games, like I said before. I really like Mega Man 11 as well, and it has more modern up-to-date graphics and stuff like that, but for my money, I think this is a better game than it, and so I recommend at least taking a look at it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to try to do more of these kind of games you might have missed videos. Most of them will be focused on the Switch, but there'll be some PS4 stuff and some Xbox stuff and so on as well, uh, and also PC. Uh, but for now, it's going to be focused on Switch stuff just because that's kind of where all the ending games are. There's like so many of them and they're constantly coming out. Uh, yeah, if you want to see more, you know, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, there's a playlist that these are all going into, so follow that. And yeah, just buy games and have fun, guys. See ya.